Okay, Alexander, we uh, have uh, an interesting story here, and uh, big, uh, a big up, big hats off to Technofog, who's uh, the legal, uh, a legal blogger, um, very popular on Twitter. He also has a, he also has a Substack, as well, and it looks like Technofog has spotted uh, something that uh, no one else has been able to spot, and that is that special counsel John Durham is indeed uh, keying into the Hillary Clinton campaign. And you're going to have to explain this because this is it's a very legal find that Technofog has discovered. But it, this, this is what he tweeted out. This is significant. Special counsel John Durham, the 2016 Hillary Clinton presidential campaign and its employees are currently subject to matters. And the word matters is in quotes to matters before the special counsel. What is he talking about here? They're currently subject to matters before the special counsel. Right. In a, in a simple, in one word, they're being investigated by special counsel. <laughs> that, that, is what, that is what it means. Now, uh, first of all, hats off to Technofog for spotting this. It's come out of a legal submission that's been made in the case of Igor Danchenko. Now, Igor Danchenko is this person who was a researcher at the Brookings Institution, um, a, a disciple, follower, and, uh, you know, somebody who's been built up by Fiona Hill, this individual who has played such a prominent role in policy, policy um, U.S. policy towards Russia recently. And Igor Danchenko has recently been a outed by, uh, well, he's been outed for some time, as the person who was the primary source for Christopher Steele's dossier. And Durham has recently brought a indictment against him. He's charged him for lying and misinforming the FBI about his sources for the dossier. And if you remember, one of the key disclosures uh, that in that charge, in that massive indictment of um, of Danchenko, was that key sources of the dossier were people who were deeply connected to the Clintons, including a, an important uh, uh, executive who was feeding him information, a PR executive uh, who was feeding him information, uh, an individual who'd been very close to the Clinton to the Clintons who'd supported Bill Clinton in 1992 and 1996 during the presidential elections of those years which Bill Clinton won and who was still involved, who was still deeply involved with the Clintons apparently to this day. Now, Danchenko has pleaded not guilty, something which many of us found a little surprising because the evidence that he had lied to the FBI and misinformed the FBI seemed to me to be completely overwhelming. And I found it very strange that he would actually deny uh, having done that, that he would plead not guilty, given that his position factually seems incredibly difficult. And I did wonder what was going on, and I did wonder whether perhaps he might be disputing the claim that he had lied because he's end intending at some point to do a deal with Durham, in which he provides more information about the people he was working for. Well, it turns out that the explanation is different. And that is that it turns out that the people who are providing Danchenko with his lawyers are the people he was working for. In other words, the Hillary Clinton campaign. The lawyers who represent Danchenko are lawyers who represent Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. Now, that still exists. It's still an organization. It's still there. It's still got various... Uh, it, still, it still exists as, a, as an entity, and people who are involved in it are still, you know, are still involved in it. And it has its law firm, and that law firm is representing Danchenko. Now, what Durham has said is this law firm cannot represent Danchenko because there is a conflict of interest, because what the law firm is, in effect, doing 
is that it is representing Danchenko in circumstances where the Clinton campaign, Clinton campaign operatives might be called as witnesses and are ultimately, and again, I'm using my own word here, under investigation themselves. So they have an interest, if you like, in getting Danchenko to stonewall and to make denials because that protects them. But it may be contrary, ultimately, to Danchenko's own interests because he could end up with a much more severe sentence by taking that kind of line than uh, would be the case if he was uh, um, cooperating with special counsel as an entirely independent set of lawyers might advise him to do. Now, I, I, I'm going beyond what Durham is actually saying in these filings, because, of course, filing, Durham can't actually say that. But that is the essential problem. It is that the lawyers who are representing Danchenko, because they have other clients who are potentially under investigation themselves, or who are probably under investigation themselves, have an interest in preventing their client Danchenko from cooperating with special counsel and denying everything because they are shielding their other clients. So th that's the conflict of interest. That's what the point the Technofrog is making. I I've put it, as I said, much more straightforwardly than a lawyer would do in a legal filing, because you can't say those things in quite that way, because you can't predict actions that, uh, is, you know, th that are being taken, and you can't necessarily say, well, this law firm is actually telling Danchenko to in maintain his denials in order to protect the Hillary Clinton campaign, because you don't actually know that. But of course, it's the inference that everybody is going to make, and it highlights the conflict of interest which exists. So, the, the net effect of this, the net result, is because we now know that there is a conflict of interest, we know that special counsel, that Durham, is investigating the Hillary Clinton campaign. It's that, that, that's, that's the process, if you like, where we arrive at this deduction. A very serious conflict of interest, it seems. A very, a very tangled web, all of it. Uh, Incredible. I'll put a link for this article, by the way, to uh, Technofog's uh, Substack in the description box down below. Let me just read you one excerpt from that, Alexander, and you could probably dig into it a little better as well. Uh, according to Durham's latest filing, Stuart Sears is a partner at the law firm Schertler, uh, Honorato, Mead, and Sears. Notably, the firm is currently representing the 2016 Hillary for America presidential campaign i.e. the Clinton campaign, as well as multiple former employees of that campaign in matters before the special counsel. And this is an excerpt that uh, a screen grab from um, Durham's filing. Highlighted in yellow, it says, Law Firm, Schertler, Onotario, Mead, and Sears. In yellow, in addition to the representation of the defendant, a separate lawyer at the firm is currently representing 2016 Hillary for America presidential campaign as well as multiple former employees of that campaign in matters before the special counsel, as discussed more fully below, the Clinton campaign. And uh, Technofog says, did you catch that? I'll emphasize, the Hillary Clinton campaign and its employees are subject to matters before the special counsel. So there you go. <laughs> as I said, that's, that's what it says. I mean, you have to translate it into plain English. But, but, you know, that's what essentially I've done. I mean, I, I, in other words, they are before special counsel. Special counsel is looking into them. And if you read other parts of the filing, it talks about, you know, them coming forward and being called as witnesses in the case against Danchenko, that sort of thing. But for special counsel to object so strongly to this law firm representing Danchenko, it's not just a case that they might find 
some embarrassment because some of their other clients might be called as witnesses in the case against this particular client it is basically an indication that as far as special counsel is concerned that this law firm its duties to its other clients must contradict their duty to this particular client they it makes it impossible for them to represent this particular client, who is, which is to say Danchenko, in his own best interests, because arguably, I stress arguably, be careful what I say, arguably, he has, in the interest of their other clients, it is better if he doesn't tell the full truth and cooperate with special counsel, as it might be in his best interests to do. I have to say, I find yeah. this all yeah. fascinating. I find it extraordinary that Danchenko is being represented by lawyers who have been who are acting for the Hillary Clinton campaign. I mean that that actually for me is I'm going to say straightforward. I think it's damning. I mean, why would they want to represent Danchenko if they had nothing to do with him? I mean, it, 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 it's it's extraordinary. It, it in itself creates a link between the Hillary Clinton campaign and Danchenko and the whole concoction of the Steele dossier. So, I mean, it, it, it shows. It, it's, I'm going to say it again. I mean, we were straightforward about this. It's the sort of thing that, you know, mafia lawyers tend to do, you know, when they were defending yeah, was, the mob. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that kind of lock about it. I was going to say it. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the exact same thing. Uh, in, in the article, Technofog lists various uh, conflicts of interest that Durham has highlighted as well um, with regards to, to this Danchenko incident and the connection to, to Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, why would they, why would this law firm do this the only thing that I can think of is that uh, they're out to protect much bigger fish than Danchenko. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the most logical explanation, isn't it? Absolutely. That's exactly the explanation. I wonder what's going on, by the way. And I wonder whether what we're going to see is that there's going to be some attempts to get the president to start exercising pardons in order to protect people from investigation. Because th th to my mind, this is the way, this is... This is the shape of this thing at the moment. That, that's, that's how this is looking, because the, the um, conflict of interest is so obvious that I find it very difficult to imagine that they think that they can sustain it for very long. It looks like a holding operation in order to try to keep this thing going and to keep it operating until, of course, the moment comes when the pardon power is wielded. Uh, 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 you know, to, to basically protect them all, because that's it seems to me what the object that that's the only way that this thing can can uh, uh, re I mean that their their position can ever be protected in full. Not just, of course, Danchenko himself, but all the much bigger people behind the scenes who are pulling all the strings and pulling the levers and doing all of these things, who are basically using him. Yeah, and Biden's going to sign those parties, no doubt about it. Oh, um, I think so. Yeah, of course he will. It, and the really media, will, this and the media, will, and the media yeah, will support the, him doing it. I yeah, mean, that's that's absolutely. that's baked in the cake. But bear in mind, of course, the fix special, again. Yeah, no, exactly. But bear in mind, of course, the special counsel doesn't just bring prosecutions; he also delivers a report. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it's also the case that, of course, um, depending on what happens in twenty twenty two. If the president misuses his pardon power in order to obstruct an investigation by special counsel, well, arguably, that could provide grounds for impeachment proceedings. It was alleged against Trump. Why would it not be used properly against a president who granted by, uh, pardons in order to obstruct this particular investigation? So it's a high stakes game, but I think that is the ultimate objective. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> maybe maybe what the Democrats are looking to do is to get uh, find a way to get Biden out of there. But uh, just to close out the video, Alexander, it's it's really interesting. One of the last uh, passages from this article says it has long been suspected that the Clinton campaign and those in Clinton's orbit had a more hands-on approach to the research of Fusion GPS and Christopher Steele than has been reported. The depths of that involvement, however, have been somewhat of a mystery. Well, I, I don't think it's <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, you know, suspected, a mystery. Well, only to those, it seems to me, who can't join up the dots. <laughs> because to me, it's absolutely plain and simple what happened. I mean, bear in mind, uh, uh, you know, no less a person than the CIA director, Brennan, who's been one of the most active Russia gators, is known to have reported to Barack Obama um, in 2016 that Hillary Clinton and her campaign were uh, st stirring up this issue of Trump's connections to Russia in order to divert attention away from her misuse of a private server for her emails when she was Secretary of State from that particular issue. So, as I said, I mean, um, mystery to some maybe, but not mystery to all, and certainly not to us here on the Duran. I think if you reel back, if you go all the way back to the start of Russiagate, you will find article after article, video after video, in which we basically laid it all out. So, I mean, I, I can't say that it's any kind of mystery to me. Obviously, there are details we don't know, and... The precise role of Hillary herself, if she had any, uh, that we don't know either. But, you know, the, the campaign was deeply implicated in all of this and that uh, of that there is no doubt and that Hillary herself had some knowledge of it. Well, to be frank about that, I don't have any doubt about that either. <laughs> Of course, of course. All right. We'll uh, we'll leave it there. Once again, I'll put a link to that article down below in the description box. It's not a long read, but it is very, very fascinating. Uh, the Duran.locals.com, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble, and Super U. And go to the Duran shop, 10% off when you use the code GOODDAY. You get 10% off all merch. You have a good day, Mug? Of course I do. There it is. You all can right. see it there. Always beside me now. Great. Use that code, use that phrase, and you will get 10% off anything you order on the Duran shop. Take care.